Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from sysadmin102 In uh, today's video, I will show you how to install TrueNet Scale on ESXi and this is on the HB uh, Elite uh, Mini 800G9 with the 8TB of NVMe uh, As you know, I have not making a TrueNet video for a while so this is a comeback I'm gonna start updating uh, my tutorial on uh, TrueNet so if you're interested in uh, the tutorial, make sure that you uh, subscribe, like, and share for a future video. And like always, uh, thank you for all your support. Uh, and if you think the video is helpful, uh, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And let's get started. So for the first step, we're going to upload the TrueNest Scale ISO to the ESXi. Uh, the ISO, you can download it from the IX system website. And when you log in into your ESXi web UI, you're gonna navigate it to um, storage and then you're gonna select uh, whatever storage that you have and then you're gonna select data store browser and then from here you can select upload and then you can upload a copy of your TrueNAS uh, ISO in there I already have one uh, uploaded next we will configure the NVMe SSD pass through in the uh, ESXi so you would navigate it to uh, host and then uh, manage and then hardware then from here we're gonna select as you see we have a uh, two ssd with two different controller in here we're gonna pass to uh, both of these and toggle pass through so this one is the uh, esxi uh, 8.0 uh, so the minute i toggle uh, pass through it automatically active um, however, I do believe you on uh, ESXi 7 or uh, ESXi uh, 6.5, you need to uh, restart for it to take effect. Next step, we're going to create a uh, TrueNet Scale virtual machine on ESXi. So you would navigate to virtual machines and then you will select create a ratio of VM. And then you select next to create a uh, new virtual machine. From here, you can uh, enter the name for it. Uh, you can to whatever name uh, that you would like however I recommend it that you should come up with the naming conventions so that way uh, if you have more than one true nest in the future it's easier to identify them so in this example I'm gonna name it uh, TNS-01 so TNS obviously stands for a true nest scale and uh, hyphen 01 that the identifier for uh, true nest scale VM number one subsequently if you have more than one you can name it TNS0203 and so far and so on. So for the guest OS family, it's going to be Linux. And then for the guest OS versions, it's going to be a Debian 12 64 bit. And we're going to select next. Uh, for storage, if you have multiple storage, select the one that you want to store the VM on. Otherwise, uh, select next. Customize setting. So for the CPU, minimum of four. Uh, however, if your hardware supported, six or more would be better and then for the memory at the minimum it's uh, 16 gigabyte however if your hardware is supported i recommend it 32 or more and then for the reservation we're going to reset all the guest memory for this vm for better performance next moving on to the hard disk we're going to remove the hard disk and we're going to remove the scuzzy controller just because i, I don't like scuzzy controller we're going to select to uh, add other device. We're going to select NVMe controller. And we're going to add a hard disk. And we can select a new uh, standard hard disk. 16 GB, the default setting is uh, perfectly fine. All right, moving on to the network adapter, we're going to keep the default settings. And for the CD, we're going to select uh, data store ISO file. And we're going to select the true NAS scale ISO that we uploaded. Next, we're going to Select Add Other Device and PCI Device, and we're gonna repeat the same step: Add Other Device and PCI Device. So that automatically added the two uh, PCI uh, NVMe controller that we uh, toggle path pass through earlier. And we're gonna head over to VM Options, and we're gonna go down to uh, Boot Options, and from here we're gonna change it to uh, EFI, and then we're gonna select Next, and we're gonna select Finish. All right, next we're gonna install TrueNAS on the VM we just created. So we're gonna select uh, the VM I just created, TNS-01, uh, and I'm gonna start that VM. 
All right, and we're gonna select enter to start the installation. And we're gonna select uh, the default option to install or upgrade. And then I'm gonna select the first one, the SDA VMware Virtual Machine. The other two that the NVMe uh, that we passed through. And we're gonna select enter to rule C. So here you have the option to uh, config the password for the TrueNAS underscore admin user or um, you can config it later on using the web uh, UI. So I'm going to select the second option to config using a web UI. All right, and we have TrueNet installed on the virtual machine we just created. We're going to select enter. And we're going to go down to the third option. We're going to reboot the system. And select enter to boot into TrueNet. So after it finished uh, booting, it will give you the IP address to access uh, the web UI. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. So before we access the web UI, uh, one more thing I want to do is uh, to set the TrueNAS VM to auto start. So that's why it, uh, the VM restarted. Uh, after ESXi uh, completing boot up, it's going to automatically boot up into TrueNAS. And that way you can refrain uh, interruption for services. So we're going to go to actions and we're going to select uh, auto star and we're going to select enable. And if you go back to uh, actions and then you select auto star and uh, config. So right here is the uh, delay. So after uh, ESXi boot up, there's going to be 120 second delay uh, to allow ESXi fully boot up. And then after that, the script going to kick in and automatically uh, star uh, true nest. All right, since we didn't change anything, I'm going to select uh, cancel. And then we're going to access a uh, true net web uh, UI. So we're going to be 10.13.2.212. I'm going to zoom it in to make it uh, easier for you to see. So um, as the option that we selected, we're going to set up the password for the true net underscore admin. And um, after we've done that, we're going to select sign in. And next, we're going to re-aid our first pool by navigating to uh, storage and re-aid pool. So for the name, I recommend it that you use uh, naming conventions such as the one I suggested. It's going to be your site code and then the server name, uh, the share tab, the UH, and then um, the rate tab that you assign to that pool. Uh, that make it easier to recognize it that the pool provide uh, any type of uh, redundancy or it not provide any type of redundancy and then uh, obviously the pool number uh, you possibly gonna have multiple pool in the future so it's easier to keep them in sequence so it's easier to uh, identify them so i'm gonna go ahead and copy this i'm gonna paste this in here so tns uh, zero one that uh, true nest scale uh, server number one or the VM number one and you have the option to encrypt the data uh, however for the uh, tutorial we're not gonna um, enable that options and once you've done that we're gonna select next so over here you're gonna have uh, the number of unviable disks that not assigned to a pool or a VDEP um, for the layout since we only have to uh, NVMe, we limit it to only two options, the stride, which is uh, maximize uh, capacity, but it will result in the data loss if it fail because it have it provide zero redundancy. Uh, and if you select this option, and then for the width, we're gonna select two. They're gonna select uh, the two on that side disk and assign it to the, the pool that we can, we go into re -8. So as you see right here, the data is going to be a uh, stride and uh, it's going to be two disks, uh, 364 uh, terabyte. So for this scenario, we're using stride and that's going to give us a total raw capacity of uh, 742 terabyte. This is provide absolutely zero redundancy. If one of the S uh, NVMe fail, you lose all your data. The second option, which I recommended too, is the uh, mirror. So for this option, uh, your total uh, raw uh, capacity, it 
go down by half. So you only got 3464 terabyte of storage. Uh, what it means is the data going to write to uh, both NVMe and it uh, essentially identical. If one go down, uh, you still have data stored on the other one. You just have to replace the one that failed and then it's going to replicate the data from uh, the other over. All right. So we're going to select uh, steps and go to review. And if everything good, we're going to select re uh, pool. And we're going to check confirm and continue. So now we have our first pool. In the next video, I will uh, show you how to create your data set, set up as MP and how to access it from uh, Mac OS, window or Linux. Uh, if you think the video is helpful, don't forget to subscribe, like and share. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.